The next thing we're going to do in this class is similar to what we did with the uh, tree roots, we're going to bring this mesh into ZBrush and do a little bit of cleaning up on it. Now trees and vertical objects um, with these thin branches can, um, can pose some interesting problems for reconstructing the mesh um, and UV mapping the mesh in, um, in ZBrush. You can get things like holes in the mesh like we've got here. You can get um, objects that are floating in space like these leaves and you can also get noise in the mesh, a noisy mesh which is where it's trying to calculate the, um, the geometry of the photos and it's getting kind of like this noisy um, effect uh, through it. Now one way of eliminating that noise um, in PhotoScan is you can go up to Tools, you can go to Mesh and there's an option here called Smooth Mesh. If we select that, it's got a, um, a Passes button here and you can select the number of passes of smoothing the mesh. If we leave that on one and we have a look at the viewport here at the Mesh Smoothness and press OK, what you'll see after this process is finished is it's evened out and averaged out the surface detail of the um, of the mesh. What it also does though is it can reduce the detail of finely detailed parts of the mesh, like spiky edges of the um, of the bark, um, thin capillary um, plants growing up the trunks of the trees. Uh, thin capillary roots going off the bottom of the trees. So, um, in my experience of using this software, I've tended to leave that off um, so that it uh, gives you the extra noise and the extra detail um, on the flatter parts of the mesh so that you're able to um, remove the noise uh, by painting it out um, in ZBrush. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to export this model and then save it as um, a ZBrush file. So to export this model, we go up to File, Export Model, and we're going to save this in um, as Rainforest Tree, Tree underscore A1 underscore FX PhD Training dot OBJ. Um, we don't need the texture, so we'll save that and then we can bring it into ZBrush. So we'll fire up ZBrush and we'll have a look at some of the tools that we can use to sculpt this tree um, and repair any of the um, the missing geometry, the rough um, surfaces that have been created and basically just tidy it up so that it's going to be give us a really, really good um, reprojection. Um, once we've UV'd it. So now that we're in ZBrush, we're going to go onto the import button and we're going to import our tree. Now all the different sizes and shapes of objects that you'll be working on have different techniques and different um, different methods for sculpting and adjusting them um, that are slightly different to each other. So if we go into photo scan folder, we'll grab this um, FXBHD training file that we just saved. Now, once again, the way to uh, draw this into the scene so that we can edit it is we'll wait for it to load and then we can just s drag and pull that into the viewport. We're going to hit edit object, go to perspective view so that we can see this object in, um, in the correct uh, viewport, uh, view orientation. And then now we're going to go and start, um, editing our shape. So one of the first things I'm going to, I'm going to be doing with this, um, with this tree is I want to be able to delete these outside edges, but not delete the inside edges of this tree so that I'm able to keep the detail that I want, but delete the detail that I don't want. Things like this floating, um, edge that it's over here. I want to get rid of that 
potentially these leaves that are coming off here, um, they can be cards. I don't need these to be necessarily um, textured uh, geometry coming off the side because this is all the leaves that it's failed to scan um, super, super accurately that are really, really razor thin. And the top of the tree here, we can see here we've got a double projection with the geometry, uh, some holes on the side here, and basically the top part is missing, as well as some bumped out um, geometry here. So let's have a look at how we can repair all of this um, and delete these side parts. So to delete sections of geometry, you can use um, selection and then you can delete the unselected objects. That's one way to do it. Um, and the other way is to use the delete selection. So let's have a look at, um, first of all, selecting the parts that we want to delete. So I'm going to hold down the control and shift key. And I'm going to change this brush to lasso. And I'm going to go around this shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to lasso around this geometry that we want to delete um, by holding the control and the shift key on the keyboard. And then once we've done that, we're going to um, select around that geometry and then we're going to use, and then we're going to use the um, delete unselected button. So let's just rotate around to where we can see the geometry that we want to get rid of. Hold control and shift. And I'm going to go around this geometry that I want to eliminate. And now when that's all um, visible in the viewport, I'm going to go over to geometry. I'm going to go to modified topology. And down in this list here, I've got a um, delete hidden. So if you um, draw a selection around the scene, it will swap between the geometry that you've selected and the geometry that you've deselected. So what we're going to do is um, draw, a, draw a, a circle on the screen so that we have the, the geometry that we want to keep uh, selected uh, visible in the screen and the geometry that we want to delete hidden in the screen. And then we go up to delete hidden and that's going to delete the geometry um, that we have hidden in the scene. So let's rotate around now to the other side um, of this shape. And we'll select, invert that selection and we'll delete hidden. Then we're going to rotate around to the other side where all this noisy leaves are down here. And we're going to select that very carefully, not to um, chop into the geometry. We're going to delete hidden on that. Then on the side of the tree here, you can optionally keep these leaves. You can see them here. Now they'll texture up. Um, quite nicely with the leaf textures, but the geometry is going to be very, very messy and very heavy um, when you go to render that. So I'm going to option to um, delete these and I'm going to flatten out the surface and this is going to be, be a tree that uses cards as leaves. So let's go down here and see if there's any extras.
So we're going to delete um, the top of this tree. Now where this hole is in the tree, you're going to get very good texture detail and surfaces right up to the very top of this tree, right up to the, the top part there. So if you delete the geometry all the way down to the bottom of this gap, meaning um, delete the delete the tree all the way to here. What you'll actually be doing is you'll have all clean, um, cleanish geometry. However, um, the problem is, is you're going to lose so much detail of the, um, of the actual tree itself. So, um, I would suggest actually, um, to, uh, seeming as have to model, um, the upper part of the tree anyway, the other, um, two thirds of the tree that go up into the, um, into the palm tree branches anyway in uh, Maya is I would actually um, leave this as much of the tree in as possible um, and maybe just delete this um, this top section here that um, that only has one side on it and keep the rest because that's just going to give you a lot more texture and um, geometry detail that you can easily fill in with the um, Maya modeling later anyway, because you need to model um, the rest of the trunk and texture it with a um, tileable texture and also have the branches coming off this tree and all the foliage. It's really just the base and the textures on here that you're wanting to get um, detail out of the photo scanned work. Now, the next thing we wanna, wanna have a look at is um, how to smooth out some of these rough edges on the tree. Now, there's a difference between um, the detail in the scan and errors in the scan. And I'll show you how to have a look at and identify those. Detail in the scan is things like this rough texture on the tree. If we zoom out, we can see, and we have a look at that texture, we can see that it's very, very smooth on this part, even though it has rough geometry texture on it. And then it turns into very bumpy on this part. That's actually where the plants are growing across the um, across the palm tree. Now down here, um, it's very noisy and um, spiky geometry as well. But that's actually where the trunk of the palm tree is branching into the roots. So all these edges and this sort of um, sharp spiky geometry down here is actually part of the... Um, the scan data as well and it's not actually incorrect um, noise. What is noise is these horizontal looking lines that appear on flat straight edges of the model. So if we go up here to the um, upper parts of this side branch tree here You'll see here that there's this unusual serrated edge looking uh, diagonal lines going across this way, across the tree branch. And what those actually are is where the point cloud has been dispersed over the, um, over the texture maps and it actually hasn't had enough information to fill in um, to create a cylinder. And so what it's created is actually um, lines that kind of join together, a bit like um, a bit like pixels, like joining a thing together. So what you can do is you can um, you can paint um, smooth that out to get rid of those lines, and then if you want to add back in the detail, you can go onto um, like a clay brush and use a different um, you can use a different stroke pattern in here. So let's say we use this spiky one here. And 
and we can easily add in a little bit of texture detail into the tree using our um, using our brushes with an alpha channel on it. Obviously, the best alpha channel to have would be a normal map of the um, tree trunk so that you get the best results. But this will still give you, um, still fix up any weird mathematical looking um, parts of the geometry and definitely give you um, a much better result. Now, the next thing we want to fix up is these bubbles. The bubbles aren't part of the scan data. They're actually errors that are caused by holes in the scan data. So how we can fix those is we can use the trim dynamic brush. Now the trim dynamic brush we used before on the rocks and it's great because it allows us to flatten out areas of geometry without losing detail. So it's squishing down the, um, the detail of the, um, of the geometry and retaining kind of like the quirky, unusual um, shape of it. So you can paint out that, um, paint out those, those bumps really easily and squish it back down onto the surface of the tree without, um, without making it look really smooth and making it look like a metal tube or an aluminium tube. You're actually just squishing down that detail onto the trunk. And the good thing about using ZBrush to do this is it gives it a very um, natural feel like if you look at this rendered and it looks a bit unusual, it's still going to look quite um, natural and 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 um, naturally occurring, because even though it may um, may not be anatomically correct for that plant species to have this sort of weird smooth bit of timber on here that maybe has a slightly different um, bump texture on it, what it's going to do is it's going to allow people to look at it and go well, that's still convincing, you know, my brain that that is a tree trunk and that's a, you know, organic surface on that, on that tree trunk. Whereas when you see something that looks mathematically created, um, it's very unusual and very unnatural. That's when your brain is going to start to go, oh, hey, listen, there's some problem here. This image that I'm looking at is actually artificially created. So for example, this section here, the tree, we've got this big bulb I'm um, sticking out. This is the kind of thing that looks like it's not generated by, um, you know, by an artist or by photography. It looks mathematically created um, as an error. So that's the kind of thing you want to smooth out and um, and get rid of with with um, these three D brush strokes that can squish it all out and and sculpt it basically into the um, back into the geometry. Now, if you want to add um, add the de surface detail back in just once again, get the, uh, the brush that you've got and you can choose some different, different, um, texture maps. And push and pull those around. So, um, so if you just add a little bit of texture detail back into this, um, part of the geometry that's been smoothed off here so that you can get rid of those smooth edges and, um, and add in some texture detail back into this shape that could really help to, um, integrate it back into the, into the tree and give you some really nice, give you some really nice results. Alright, let's have a look at our whole tree now.
So that's looking pretty cool. Obviously you want to do some more repairs to the edges of these holes and things like that. But keep in mind that you'll um, you'll also have to um, do some additional modeling to this surface, to the base and to where the leaves are by adding in cards and things like that in, um, in Maya as well. So let's now um, retopologize this mesh and we'll have a look at how we can um, get a low poly mesh of this um, back out into PhotoScan. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our subtool to the geometry and we're going to go into the duplicate button which is going to give us a copy and we're going to rename the duplicate um, we're going to call that uh, retopology and then we're going to call the master one uh, master So this one's our master one we're using to project and this one's our retopologized one. So now that we've done that, we're going to go down to geometry and we're going to go onto our Z remesher. So let's select half, turn adaptive off um, and we're going to hit Z remesher. Now this is going to pull our poly count from 2.58 million down to we're aiming for around 15,000 um, mark. So we'll let this um, Z remesher um, process through and what we're trying to aim for is some um, nice even quad geometry. Now that we've got this um, lower res uh, model, what we're going to have a look at is DynaMesh. Now, DynaMesh is a dynamic sculpting um, section in ZBrush, which allows you to um, dynamically generate new geometry while you're sculpting. An example of this would be um, if you have the neck of a creature and you extrude out the head and ears and horns and things like that, it's going to dynamically um, generate new geometry to sculpt with rather than just um, stretching out the existing high poly geometry. So you're not just stretching and stretching and stretching out the geometry. It's going to generate geometry as you're um, pulling the geometry around. So to do um, one of the great things DynaMesh is good for is filling in holes. So as you can see here, we've got all these holes um, across this mesh, holes on the side of this tree, uh, holes on the other side, back side of this tree. And that's going to um, just be super ugly and cause a lot of pain and suffering um, for us. It's also quite difficult to cap, um, quite difficult to fill in manually. So if we go into DynaMesh, we've got our resolution set to 128 um, and all you have to do is hit this button and it's now created a low polygon um, capped off fully secured watertight mesh around our tree which is awesome. Um, so we've got here um, an active points of 8,537, which is um, which is the number of polys from that resolution of DynaMesh, which is quite low. But what it has done is it's, it's filled in all the um, holes on our mesh. Now, this doesn't always work. If you've got a really complicated um, bath-shaped object, it's going to, of course, fill in the top of the object um, unless you put in a lot of different settings. So you've got to be really careful about um, what kind of settings you use when you're using it. But now that we've got this um, this set up, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and divide this geometry up and then reproject it back onto our master um, geometry. So let's give it a go, give a go of that now. So we're going to go up to five subdivision levels, which is going to give us 2.24 um, polys. And we might even go to a higher subdiv level, um, which will give us 9 million um, polygons, which is going to be very, very, very detailed and smooth 
um, geometry. So let's now go into our retopology and we'll reproject that back onto the surface. So to reproject it, just go into here, into the project um, list, make sure it's turned on, and then just press project all. And that will um, allow the uh, process to go through and it's gonna project this geometry and match it all together. All right, so now that's finished projecting, we can turn off our um, projection mesh and let's have a look at our final um, final tree. So you can see here, this is where the hole was, where we deleted our, um, we deleted our leaves. And some of the little areas like this, where there was um, spiky leaf geometry and things like that, there's a few little weird edges on there that we might want to clean up. Same as on this top part of the tree here. These are the areas where there's holes in the geometry and it's, um, it's filled them in. So once again, um, you'll be wanting to go in there with your uh, sculpting tools and use a little bit of, um, give them a little bit of uh, special source, um, a bit of ZBrush love to get the, uh, get rid of these um, edges and blend in the, the shape into the rest of the model. Don't be afraid to get in there and, and um, really edit this stuff because at the end of the day, what you want to do is create this, um, create this content to really, to really be easily um, texture mapped and easily, easily work render as well without any weird geometry errors. So you want to just flatten that down and get it as, um, get it working as easily as possible for your, um, for your renders. So once you've, once you've, um, squished that all down and then textured it up with some nice, um, you know, some nice surface details that you've got on there. Um, you can then go, we'll assume that's all been completed after you've spent, you know, a good couple of, um, maybe an hour or so, like tidying up all those details and adding in and subtracting texture details from sections like this, where you've got, you know, these flat pieces where the leaves have been deleted. So you just want to schmick that all up. Now where these spiky parts are, like here, this is going to render incorrectly. So you really need to um, not be shy and get that smooth, get that smooth brush out and really repair those um, inside out bits of geometry. And then if you need to, just go over the top of it with these textured um, alpha mapped brushes and uh, and re, um, redo some work on those. Because you need to have all the geometry um, facing the correct way out. You can't have it inside out and all squishing all over itself. It's not going to work when you go to um, use it as displacement maps, when you go to render it, when you go to, um, you know, do deformations on it and do all kinds of things. Basically, that's the geometry is, is, is unwell and you need to um, be, the, be the doctor and fix it, basically. Um, and even if you need to smooth it out and dumb it down um, so that it's more... Um, more simple than it used to be, that's fine because it will render easily and it will um, work in the VFX pipeline more easily if you're doing that. And don't forget as well, a lot of these assets are going to be used, you know, they're going to be used with motion blur, with depth of field, and the final, um, you know, the final image that you see of these, um, of these objects we use one of these trees as an example. You know, this is the foreground. This is the tree here we're working on. You know, there's there's going to be motion blur. There's going to be depth of field. There's going to be a lot of action happening in this frame. And hopefully, if it's not a boring movie, you'll have a few robots fighting other robots or 
um, commandos or something running through the background of the scene um, or the foreground or bullets whizzing past. And that's actually going to be the um, context of the shot, even if it's used close up. It'll be a couple of seconds and it'll just be um, this awesome detailed element that you never question is actually there in the scene when all the rest of the story is taking place around that prop, basically. So keep in mind the context of the content you're using. And um, yes, it does have to look amazing, but it's not the um, main character in the story. It's just an element in the scene that needs to seamlessly blend into it and just work properly. All right, so now we've got that um, set up. We've got five levels of detail on our model. And now what we wanna do is we wanna go and create some UV maps. So we're gonna select Z plugin, go down to UV master, and we're gonna click work on clone, which is gonna give us a clone of our tree. Now, if we go into um, UV master and just put it over onto the side of our um, object here, one of the ways I like to split up the poly groups for trees is rather than having two vertical trunks in one poly group, that's going to be a little bit difficult to UV unwrap. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go enable poly groups and then I'm going to scroll down to my poly groups menu and I'm going to select, press control and shift and then I'm going to select this right hand side of the tree and I'm going to say group that as one poly group and then tap the screen. Then I'm going to select the second top part of this tree and I'm going to select that as a poly group which is going to give us which is going to give us this many poly groups. Let's have a look and we'll see if we can get this base and set it into a single poly group. So now we have now we have three main poly groups except for these little pink geometry here. Now this this pink geometry is a leftover part of one of the poly groups. So we want to kind of add that in all together. So what, what we'll do is we'll select a little bit over the top of that. So it's definitely just selecting all of the base and then we'll be able to get that. So we've got one poly group for this trunk tree trunk here, one for the base and one for the, um, the trunk here. So that's going to unwrap three different, um, objects for the, um, for the texture map. So now we're going to go on to here and we've got symmetry polygroups um, and we're going to add control printing and we're going to put attract. Now let's assume that the camera angle is from this side. So I'm going to attract a seam on the reverse side of the tree. So I'm going to draw that seam down this side and draw another seam down this side of the tree. So if we're looking at it from this side, we should have a seamless unwrapped texture map. Now that we um, have that, let's press um, unwrap and we'll see how that works. So that's now unwrapped successfully. Let's have a look at the um, the flattened uh, objects that we've got. So if we have a look at flatten, this is the UV um, layout that we've got. Now there's a few little errors on this and that's where I've incorrectly selected um, the geometry with um, too many poly groups. So just be careful when you um, create the, uh, the poly groups for your mesh. So now I'm just gonna copy the UVs and I'm going to go to my 
my main high resolution tree. It's in here. And I'm going to paste the UVs into this um, paste the UVs into this tree. Now that we've done that, we're able to, we can now export um, all the different levels of detail of tree into our folder. So we'll go down to subdivision level one. And we'll go on to export. We can save this as rainforest tree, tree poly um, LOD one. It's going to save an OBJ file. Then we can set it to level two. And we basically get five levels of detail out of the geometry, which is really helpful um, when we're using different, um, using this in different parts of the pipeline. People might import these into Nuke and position them for working on VFX shots. People might use the ultra high resolution one to generate normal maps for a game engine or displacement maps for render man. Um, there's just all kinds of different, um, different reasons why it's great to have, um, lots of different levels of detail for your assets. The animators can also use a medium level of detail um, when they're animating around the scene. So if a creature um, grabs onto part of this tree, they'll have enough detail to accurately wrap the hands around it, but not too much detail so that it slows down their scene. So once you've exported all these different meshes, um, you can then go back into PhotoScan and texture the tree similar to what we did with the um so now that we're back in uh photo scan we've got our old mesh here with all the different holes and errors on it and weird stuff going on and what we're going to do is we're going to import our schmicked up mesh out of zbrush so we'll go into um tools import import mesh we'll go into rainforest tree um level of detail three. I'm going to bring that in because it's a sort of medium level detail um, mesh that still has all the UV maps on it. And that's our mesh that we've got out of, um, out of ZBrush. And then to create a texture map, we're going to go on to build texture. Now it's got cube UVs because it's found out that this is a UV model. Uh, the blending mode is going to be set to mosaic. The texture size is set to 16K. Now let's press OK and we'll let that um, process the textures. Now when you load in the high resolution mesh, um, it's going to uh, have the same texture coordinates because the UV maps are matching. So the texture map that you generate from this, um, this lower res model is going to match all the different levels of detail uh, that you use for this um, for this tree. So here's the final texture map baked onto the tree and you can see that it's just super super awesome. It's so detailed and it's completely unique the whole way around the entire tree. Um, that's one of the greatest strengths about um, photo scan assets. If you have a look at the tree texture as I rotate this around you can see that it's completely unique um, it's got so much variety and variation in the texture and in the um, color that's in the tree as you spin around it. Uh, no two even quadrants of it are the same or similar to each other. And you'd never get that in a million years um, using procedural um, tiled texture maps um, trying to use the same thing. There's just a massive amount of um, high resolution texture detail in here that's just going to look awesome when you're rendering it, especially in, um, especially when you're putting on motion blur and depth of field and things like that, because all the detail is going to be just in the background um, and it's just going to be totally convincing. Even though I've seen these trees a lot in real life and um, seen these photo scans assemble, 
it's still amazing just to look at them and see just how much variety and detail you actually get out of these um, out of these scans and out of these geometry constructions. It's just in such a short space of time, it's just an amazing um, and it's an amazing thing to see. You can turn it around so quickly um, with just photographs as a reference without doing any uh, manual modeling or manual texturing in Photoshop or Maya. We've just been using Photoscan and, um, and ZBrush. So once you've put the textures on there, you can easily export um, the model. And we're going to save this as level um, rainforest tree textured. And we'll make sure to have the export texture selected as a TIFF. And then that's going to put that flattened out 16K texture map um, into that file so that we can edit in Photoshop or import it into Maya and plug it into a Arnold or Renderman slot. Um, in the next class, we're going to be moving on to um, have a look at how to do flat ground areas. We're going to be using a rock area um, that's got a lot of flat um, detail in it, a lot of leaves on the ground. And we're going to be having a look at different techniques um, for photographing flat surfaces um, and how to get the best detail out of that. So stay tuned for that class.